and she was saying, If Harry was my grandson and I was the queen, I would say he's not my family anymore. Red is small kit. Should I cut my bangs to match hers? Because these are too long. That's dedication right there. Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. If you're new, my name is Anushka. I hope you're all doing really well. Today we have a Meghan Markle inspired makeup look that she wore during her interview with Oprah and Harry. Honestly, I was mind blown by the whole situation, but her face just looked amazing. Like she's so gorgeous. Her blush was popping. Her beauty was shining and I just felt the need to recreate this look. I'm also going to give you my two cents on the whole situation if you guys are interested in that. Um, but yeah, if you want to know how I got this look, then just keep on watching. So the first thing I want to work on are my brows. They need some work right now. I'm going to first use this Brow MVP pencil by Fenty Beauty. And this is in the shade Black Brown. I'm just trying to finish it because I've got so many now. So her brows were like just naturally filled in, there wasn't like anything major going on so I'm not going to do like the usual, you know, like bushy brow that I usually do. I'm just going to naturally fill them in like I used to. I've been following the Sydney Cummins Burn program and I'm on day, what day am I? I think I'm on day 13, yeah. And literally like just lifting my arm up to my brow like this is just killing me. But honestly, I've been really enjoying the program. So hasn't this interview caused so much drama, so much media coverage, people leaving shows because of it. So I watched the, the show with my sister, my mum and I, we actually thoroughly enjoyed it. You rarely see the royals, but I think that's the part of the, like the whole monarchy. They're so hidden away that when you see them, it's just this massive, you know, thing, right? And I think that's how they've, been able to upkeep, um, I don't know, like the royals, the, the idea of having royals, you know? Uh, you just never see them, but you see them just a little bit, you know, when they present the babies, um, when, they, when they're born, charity events and stuff like that. But you just see them a little bit to be like, wow, like, wow, we can see them. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm just gonna go through like what I personally thought about the whole situation. That does not necessarily mean it's right, but I think when it comes to mental health and racism, it's not much argument to have there, I think, you know? My mum, just for an example, like my mum has always been a fan of the royals, especially, especially Princess Diana. I mean, having all our mums, you know? Yeah, she was obsessed with Princess Diana. When everything started coming about with Prince Andrew and everything with this, like even she can clearly see like the treatment that Meghan Markle has received compared to someone like Kate Middleton. It's just two different things, like two separate things, you know? And you can't hide that. You can't hide the, the facts, the media, the, the titles. I'm talking about like the UK tabloids, you know? If she and Harry has chosen to leave the royal family, not leave, but take a step back, well, I think they're not part of it now. It's probably because they weren't receiving the support they felt like they needed within the family, within the firm. Do you know what I mean? Like. Okay, they can deal with the tabloids, but if, the, if they were receiving the support they needed within the firm, then they would probably still be part of the, the firm, you know? Um, as I think she mentioned in the interview. Okay, I'm happy with my brows. I'm not gonna like carve them out. I wanna keep this all natural. Her face, Meghan Markle looked so gorgeous. Like, even though she I was trying to focus on everything, like her makeup looks so beautiful. Um, the hair and everything. I'm not one for hair, but I tried my best, okay? I don't have a hairdresser. I'm just gonna use my Hourglass Brow Volumizing Fiber Gel in the shade Dark Brunette, just to kind of set these in place. So yeah, everyone's saying, oh, it's not the Royals, it's not the Royals, they're not racist, blah, blah, blah. Can we just uh, have, I'm just gonna remind some of you that the royal family played a massive role in colonization, okay? They probably felt like they weren't getting the support they needed within the family then what else is there to do apart from leave? Do you know what I mean? So that so actions speak louder than words. Why did they leave? Why did they all why did they leave all of that? The whole palace, the, the money, everything. They've left it all to go just live their own lives. And made sacrifices. Harry has made sacrifices that he's torn 
He's kind of like torn ties between his brother and his father, William and Charles. Oh, Charles. I don't know about you lot, but I'm not a big fan of Charles, okay? Can you imagine Charles King? I, I, there's something that don't seem right about him. And you know, out, throughout the whole interview, Meghan and Harry were both being very, very careful with what they're saying. Meghan Markle's beautiful, she's married to a prince, like, she's the first person of colour within the, for, the royal family. And look how she has been treated. Like, that is so sad. Meghan within the family was their chance to kind of like show that they're in full support of her, but the absence. You know what, the silence of the royal family with all the stuff that was being said of her just says a lot, I feel like. I know they have like people that control them that say what they can't say and what they can't say. You know, those like representatives within the family. I don't know. But if I was Kate, right? And if there were a huge amount of press that was saying my sister-in-law made me cry when I knew, I know very well it was the other way around, I would have said something. No? Isn't that just a normal human thing to do? It's such bad press on a large, large scale. Like, why would you stay silent and let people say what they have to say? And you, when you compare the press on Kate and compare it to the press on Meghan, it's so sad, it's so racist, it's so misogynist, it's so disgusting. The stuff that I read, like the avocado thing, what on earth? You can't disprove that, it's there for everyone to see. So don't tell me there's no racism in the UK tabloids, first of all. So her eyes looked very coppery and when she looks straight, it looks like a smoky eye, but it's not. Cause I took this screenshot of her looking down. She was talking, but can you see how coppery and light it is? So yeah, I think I'm gonna go with coppery shades, a bit of like a shimmer, not shimmer, like a metallic in the center. And it's, it was very warm around. And then she had a very dark brown, like line are smudged around her eyes. I actually really enjoy filming in daylight. I put a light here because sometimes it gets a little bit dull but it's, the light's very dim just in case it does get dull. So I'm just putting this here to brighten like the lids a little bit especially the corner. This just reminds me of when I used to do makeup on Bobbi Brown. And today's palette I'm actually going to use Bella Pierre's uh, 12 color pro natural eye palette. I feel like it's got the perfect shades I want to use in here And I think I'm gonna go with this shade right here Do you know I went to a hospital appointment the other day and this receptionist lady was talking very very loudly Like just speaking her mind so freely in the reception area with her colleagues Like everyone could hear what she was saying and she was saying If Harry was my grandson and I was the queen I would say he's not my family anymore And then she goes on to say can't say anything nowadays, everything's racist. Well, sorry love, but when you say stuff like that, that just makes me think you are racist. And especially when you say it loud like that and people of color are around you, like, hmm, hmm. But it just got to me like, there's a lot of like, sorry, I, I don't know, but I just feel like there's like, it's like the equivalent to old Trump supporters within the UK, like, do not, dare say anything bad about the royals how dare you blah 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 but let's be honest now what do the royals really do what do they really do i'm sure the queen has done has made a lot of sacrifices she's had she's worked very very hard she seems like a very nice lady from what megan and harry said who i don't trust is charles william and kate because william is harry's brother and he doesn't seem to be doing much or like supporting his brother much as his brother, you know? Monarchy is the oldest form of gov government in the United Kingdom, but we already have a government, don't we? In a monarchy, a king or queen is head of state. The British monarchy is known as a constitutional monarchy. This means that while the sovereign is head of state, the ability to make and pass legislation resides within an elected parliament, which is what I mentioned, the government. Although the sovereign no longer has a political or executive role, he or she continues to play an important part in the life of the nation. The monarch undertakes constitutional and representational duties which have developed over 1,000 years of history. In, in addition to these state duties, the monarch has a less formal role as head of nation. Focus for national identity, unity and pride gives a sense of stability and continuity, officially recognises success and excellence and supports the ideal of voluntary service. So to me, it's just a face. It's a fancy face to give awards, faces for charity. She has no 
role in politics there was one paragraph i mean there's loads there's loads of stuff that they do apparently but one of them is when official events such as receptions state banquets and garden parties are held the royal family supports the queen in making her guests welcome wow the latest sovereign grant accounts show that mo the monarchy cost 69.4 million in 2020 sovereign grants made uh by the government i.e taxpayer money no i was they actually cost a lot and for what please tell me why they're taking so much money and yet nhs workers and nurses are literally fighting for one percent pay rise like how does that make any sense can the not can the royal family grant like at least 50 percent to the nhs like why do they need so much money? Is it for the upbringing of Buckingham Palace? The ridiculous number of workers they probably have within the palace, the guards, the security, the Commonwealth tours. I don't know, like we're literally paying for all of this and for what? And on top of that, there's there's a paedophile within them and there's now a like various racists. Like let's just not pretend that there's just one. But the, let's just be honest now, like the thought of having someone of colour within the royal family, let's pretend that didn't that, that didn't raise concerns within the family, right? They probably have they probably had various meetings, did an analytics to how this would affect their their look, their reputation and etc etc. And I know it's so sad but I'm pretty sure that happened. I'm still on my eyeshadow people. How is that normal? I'm just I'm just so shocked at how much money, how much money they, they take. And we have literally like NHS workers, frontline workers, making so much sacrifices. Like, and they're literally fighting for a 1% pay rise. That, that, how, in what world does that make sense, honestly? I'm now going to take the shade Celebration. And I'm just, just going to pop this in the middle. Her makeup was just so natural and I loved it. But she definitely had a bit of a lighter section, like a spotlight effect in the center of her eye. So I'm just doing that. I'm gonna take um, the NARS High Pigment Longwear Eyeliner in the shade Last Frontier. It looks like this. And I'm just gonna roughly line it all across. It doesn't have to be neat because we're gonna take a little small smudgy kind of brush. And can you believe that they cut Harry's money in the first quarter of 2020 and Diana's money that she purposely left for Harry is what kept them afloat and enabled him to get security for him and his family. That just blows my mind that like the love of a mother continues even after her death. Like that, that is insane to me. Um, there's just so many little things that I've caught throughout the interview that just really shocked me. But honestly, from my point of view, whether Harry and Meghan are still part of the royal family or not, I just feel like the monarch, the royal institution is such an outdated system. Like, why do we need it? They don't align with the modern values of today. I mean, they have an Instagram account. With the way they handled the Andrew fiasco, the way they're handling this whole Meghan Markle situation, it just shows that they shouldn't they shouldn't exist anymore like and it's good that people are opening their eyes and seeing the truth i mean we megan's sharing her story probably the, the royal family probably has their side to the story but i personally don't see why someone would make that up she looked very sad she's struggling with her own family let alone struggle to get support with the mental struggles she was experiencing when she was part of the royal family i just i just find that so sad like, it's just Diana all over again. You know, people, when you dare to speak up, you get punished for it. And like, this is exactly what is happening with Meghan. She spoke up about the struggles of her mental health. Harry even admitted to the fact that he felt ashamed that his wife needed help. Because at the end of the day, we're all human and she clearly needed help. Support wasn't given. No one needs to beg to get support. We're trying to remove the stigma around mental health, right? A lot of people to this day don't understand it. You would expect the royal firm to set an example, to learn from their mistakes, but no. Clearly, from my point of view, they haven't. And it really doesn't help for some broadcaster who has a huge influence to go on TV and say, I don't believe a thing she says, like, wow, you're really helping the situation, aren't you? All I'm gonna say is, 
if they left the firm, it's because they weren't getting the help and the support they needed from their family. It's just plain facts, guys. I think the positive out of all of this is that the younger generation are really opening their eyes into like what's going on here and are questioning what, why do we need the family? Like, why do we need the royal firm? Do you know what I mean? I, like I said, I'm sure the queen has made many sacrifices, has worked super, super hard and, you know, done a lot for the country. But to, in this day today, we already have parliament. Why do we need the royal family? And why are they taking so much of taxpayer money? Like, that makes no sense to me right now. I'm just mixing, I'm just mixing this shade with this shade. Just really smoke out that liner. I just think it takes a lot of courage to go on TV and admit that you, you needed help like that. I'm gonna use the Benefit there, Real Magnet Mascara. I was gonna put lashes, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like this actually. Try and keep it wispy. I don't like to get political. On my channel i'm not an activist i know that like but when certain topics i feel like affects not affects me but i just feel like just hits me in some sort of way like with the george floyd case like that that was hard to watch and just you know take in and it's is why i spoke up and like i felt the need to speak up on social media and i try not to do that but you know, with a platform, you're only doing good by speaking up, right? But I know for a fact there's a lot of people that are against Megan and I honestly don't understand why. I feel like a lot of jealousy plays in here. She's so gorgeous, well-spoken, very intelligent. She's been a waitress. She's come from nothing. She knows she's grounded. Like, she's married to a prince and now, like, they're going to be like, oh, she's taking away him away from the family, even though he's a grown-ass man and make, can make decisions for himself. Yeah, I just feel like there's a lot of jealousy as well. She was getting more press, more tension compared to Kate. Maybe she got a bit sour about that. I just wish them all the best now that they're out of the firm. They can just live a happy life. Um, but there's a big lesson learned here when it comes to the royal family though. Like, one, why are they needed? Two, there's a paedophile and there's racist within them. Just a reminder, they played a huge part in colonization and they take a big chunk of taxpayer money. <laughs> the only positive thing that I see that comes from the royal family is the charity work that they do. But all the Commonwealth trips, the, the fancy parties, the banquets, the award ceremonies, all of that, that is paid for by taxpayer money. Like, do we really need that? And why does it have to be so expensive? I don't know, maybe like in a hundred years time, some parliament will vote to abolish the, 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 the royal institution because I don't see why they're needed anymore. Like another thing that I found very interesting is that we don't you don't pay tax in Dubai, right? So Dubai has a king and a royal family, and the, the the people of Dubai don't pay taxes, so they probably have their own funds, you know, the richest family in the world or something like that. But the UK has a monarch that the people have to pay for. Make it make sense, please. Just gonna put a bit of the Fenty Skin Eye Cream. I really like this roller thing because it's so cold. It comes with the eye cream, I think. So for foundation, I'm gonna use the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation Plus Skincare um, in the shade Tan Neutral. I thought this would be perfect for this look. The shade's like perfect for me. Uh, you made sushi, that actually looks good. What did you put in it? We didn't have avocados, so I put guacamole. I'm gonna take that one. That looks legit, you know. My brother made sushi, look at that. It looks perfect. Yeah, that's that's so good. Have you tasted it? Yeah. Legit, it tastes like we bought it. it. Tastes good. Oh my God, that's so nice, guys. Decided to make sushi all on its own. So yeah, this base is just very natural, very skin-like, and it matches my skin very, very well. And now we're gonna put some concealer. I'm gonna use my Tarte Shape Tape. 
And obviously, I don't want to be disrespectful. The idea is not to be disrespectful in this video, right? But from a young person's point of view, that's what I see. The comments about um, how dark the baby's skin colour is going to be is so saddening above all. Like, the fact that it's even a question is so sad to me. If someone's going to tell me that Meghan Markle was not treated differently because of race, then you're just straight up lying because she clearly was. She clearly was. And I'm, I'm pretty sure in the interview she did mention that when Charles becomes king, her son would be denied the titles of prince or princess. She didn't say now. I'm pretty sure she clarified that it would be applicable when Charles becomes king because then they would be the grandchildren. And then that's when they would get their titles, but they were denied that. So that's what I understood. But when I was watching the uh, Good, Morning, Good Morning Britain show, it seemed like they were arguing the fact that she said that she, she was complaining that they don't have one now and like it's such an abomination. I'm pretty sure she did clarify that in the interview. I'm already seeing words and stuff getting like twisted in the media, even though there's a video interview. <laughs> this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in shade medium. I'm gonna use my Anastasia Beverly Hills Bronzer in the shade Saddle. The thing that stood mostly um, to me with her makeup was the blush. The blush looks so beautiful. I'm actually going to be trying something new, which is the uh, NARS Air Matte Blush in the shade Darling. It's just a pretty pink shade. I just feel like mousses. So I'm just going to take some on the back of my hand. I'm just going to use my fingers just to add a bit more like color. I'm kind of bringing it up too. I'm gonna use the EX1 blush in Pretty in Peach. And I'm just gonna like, just use a bit of that to set that mousse in place and just give a bit more of a pop of color. Okay, we definitely have some blush going on here. Um, I'm just gonna put some more eyeliner on my waterline. I'm just taking a little tiny brush and we're just gonna kind of like smudge that. I really like that NARS blush, but because the, the blush was like a little bit light for my skin tone, I went in with like the EX1. It is very smoky, very smoky. I'm gonna use this Barry um, lip liner in Russet. I actually really pretty shade, sure. it's like my lip color. And then I'm just gonna finish off with the Huda Beauty Matte Lipstick in Girls Trip. It's like a pinky nude that she had. I feel like this was the closest thing I could find to her lip color. I'm now gonna take my misguided Frex Appeal Freckle Pen, because obviously she has beautiful natural freckles. When it's too like dark, I just put, I just press it with my fingers, but I just randomly Dots. and this stuff like once you put it it does not budge okay so i'm just taking my curling iron and i'm just kind of replicating that little curl that she had it's like she was putting at her hair in her ear i'm just putting it at the base to that it was just towards the end to be honest all right guys this is the final look i hope you guys enjoyed this video and just hearing some of my thoughts of the whole situation it's just shambles it's just shambles that's all i gotta say um give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe to my channel let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me and yeah i'll see you in my next video bye